part of our Commitment 2016 election coverage, WGAL is covering all the races that impact the Susquehanna Valley, from the presidential contest down to state and local races. It's our commitment to making you a more informed voter. I am joined now by the candidates running for the 169th Legislative District in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. This district covers the southwest corner of York County from Hanover to the I-83 corridor. The candidates from left to right are Robert Marcosio, a Hanover Borough Councilman, and the Republican incumbent Kate Clunk, also from Hanover. Thank you both for being here. We'll start with Mr. Marcosio, the challenger. Why are you choosing to run now? Well, I have some ideas uh, basically to get rid of the, uh, the school tax mm -hmm. and right now would be the appropriate moment because a lot of the information that would need to be calculated into it will come from the, uh, the 2020 census. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of the information that's pertinent to it would actually be covered. Mm -hmm. in that without having to add a, extra expense. Representative, property taxes have been such an issue in Harrisburg mm -hmm. for a number of years. Some people call for eliminating them completely. The Independent Fiscal Office, those numbers don't always quite add up. What, what's the right move where you're sitting, you think, for property taxes? Well, I've already voted for property tax reform in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. uh, we passed a bill over a year and a half ago, it's still waiting in the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're still waiting on Senate movement on that. Unfortunately, uh, session days have dwindled and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get a vote on that. Uh, the Senate did try to bring up uh, Senate Bill 76 mm -hmm. and that did not garner enough votes. And unfortunately, I don't think we have a, a partner with us in the governor op governor's office right now who's willing to really make that, that step forward on property tax reform. Mm. But we do need to do something. Um, if you look at property taxes, the cost drivers are really what we need to be looking at. Mm -hmm. And two of those cost drivers, one's pensions and the other one is our school funding formula here mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very proud that we passed a new basic education funding formula here in Pennsylvania. For years, our school districts in southern York County were shortchanged. Mm -hmm. We saw tremendous growth. That's in part why we have this 169th district in southern York County because of the, the population growth. Mm -hmm. With that, we've seen population growth in our schools, but we have not been receiving dollar for dollar the same amount of money from the state for that increase in student population. Mm -hmm. So with our new school funding formula, that brings a little bit more parity um, for state dollars to our local districts, and especially um, for those districts that have some other economically disadvantaged populations. So that's uh, that's one thing that I think is a positive moving mm -hmm. forward, but we also need to address the, the super, super looming uh, mm -hmm. pension debt and that $60 billion plus mm -hmm. debt mm -hmm. that's facing our state. Mr. Marcosio, it's worth noting this is not a race between Republican and Democrat. You run unaffiliated. Can you tell us more about why you don't choose a party? Uh, actually, it's no affiliation. Um, I don't choose a party because right at the present moment, they're, they're, uh, neither of the parties are actually representing the entire uh, population. You have Democrat Party is basically all about big government now, and Republican Party mostly is about corporations. Uh, you can tell by how they're passing the legislations. Like with the recent uh, uh, budget, it, the uh, the negotiations that happened behind closed mm -hmm. doors and everything uh, saved the corporations $1.8 billion in additional taxes while everything got dumped onto the working class, the small businesses in the middle mm -hmm. of our uh, economy. Um, the uh, government got all of its, what it, what it wanted with tax raises going across the board mm -hmm. and uh, basically there's just no opinion that represents the, uh, the small businesses, uh, especially in the Hanover area. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if you go down to the Hanover area, you can see the devastation that's mm -hmm. been uh, caused by uh, the government's participation in supporting the big corporations mm -hmm. that are down there. Um, they basically put a chokehold on the township itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's caused uh, many of the businesses have, have had to leave the area, uh, not because they didn't like the area. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, Hanover is a great area. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, it's everything has to pass through it mm -hmm. in order to get to the next place. Uh, 
Let me let me jump in right there to, as we keep things moving along. You both represent Hanover uh, now. You're our, you're a borough uh, councilman. So, yes. what challenges facing Hanover do you want to fight for in Harrisburg? What will you take with you to Harrisburg? We'll start with representative. Well, as a, a lifelong um, Hanoverian, my my family's been in the Hanover area for over nine generations. So. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I'm a product of their schools. I volunteer in the local community and really understand the the complexities of of our area. It's a growing area. We have uh, you know those long-standing Hanoverians, but people who have been moving up from Maryland and, mm -hmm. and from out of state. We have small businesses that want to thrive. I've been standing up for uh, one particular one downtown. Our vape vape shop who's been uh, taxed, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't vote for the tax, but um, the 40% floor tax. Mm -hmm. So, you know, small businesses um, in downtown, making sure that our downtown is thriving. As a former member of the Main Street Hanover Initiative, trying to bring back businesses mm -hmm. to downtown Hanover. And the other thing that is, is really, really important right now, I just had a meeting on Friday mm -hmm. with our local providers of um, substance abuse mm -hmm, services mm -hmm, and counseling mm -hmm. services and, and really understanding the heroin crisis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is facing our local community. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of attention in our community gets focused on New York City, mm -hmm. um, but this problem, it doesn't have, you know, a, a, a gender, it doesn't have a yeah. socioeconomic background, it doesn't have geographic borders, it's everywhere and it's in our local community in Hanover and I hope to continue fighting that. We're really running out of time here, so I wanna make sure to give you guys a chance to the last word. Mr. Marcosio, why are you the best person to represent this district, briefly? Well, we, we have developed a uh, system that's called, a, it's a cash flow residual uh, funding system mm -hmm. that would replace the system that they're using now mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to fund the schools. Uh, I, I spoke to some of the people about HB uh, 76, and uh, we, we've kind of come to an agreement on that. It's a, mm -hmm. it, it's a compatible issue mm -hmm. because what mine would require probably a couple of years to get into mm -hmm. and going mm -hmm. through uh, mm -hmm. uh, setting up the, uh, the basic format for it. Uh, HB 76 itself would, it's already, from what I understood, it already went through the Senate. Uh, it's waiting to go through the House now. And that, um, that, that bill there would put in uh, a, a great amount of uh, revenue into the economy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that expendable in econ that expendable cash mm -hmm. would actually be used to create jobs yeah. because when you put money into the foundation of our economy which is the consumer they're the ones that create the the, yeah. the demand for supply we're running right, out of time I got to cut you off that bill actually failed in the Senate the governor uh, lieutenant governor broke mm -hmm. that tie but it got very close it tied okay. representative very briefly last word on on why the right person I stand up for taxpayers I've stood up for taxpayers for the past two years I have stood up against Governor Wolf's yeah. out of control spending and tax hikes and have fought against his quest for broad-based tax increases on PIT and sales Thank you so much. We really appreciate you both being Thank here. You. And keep up with us for the latest election news on WGAL.com. There you can find more information on the other races we're following that you'll only find online.